Okay, the needles on the racket, cue up the beat, we can start the show. What's up guys, DJ Ghost Notes here, and we're at my house today in Collingwood, and we're chatting with DJ Catch. Uh, from Hydrofunk Records, so welcome man. Thanks for doing my top five with me. I haven't um, actually done any of my own work in the last three videos. That's all right. Everyone else has done the work for me. You know, <laughs> yeah. So I asked you to bring down five records with you while you're in town. Um, first of all, shout outs to um, Catch and Toby G for playing at the um, Duke Joints last night at Section 8. Killer set. Both of them just completely rocked it. That was fun. It was such a good set, man. I was and a bit like, nervous at the start. Yeah. Um, and you yeah, were saying you haven't played there. Yeah. I yeah, haven't played Robin for years. Yeah. Everyone was standing around. Yeah. You didn't know if someone was going to bump the needle or they just stared and like watched like a lot of them were. So good. I think a few people were pushed away at one point. There was a girl right up on the um, tone arm and for a little while and I saw her get ushered off. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, she was like so close, her elbow yeah. was like so close to like bumping the, yeah. the end part of the tone arm. That's half the charm of um, Section 8, I think it's like, it's right there, you can't hide anything. <laughs> So you've brought down five records with you today. Yes. What did you bring? Let's go for, um, for record number one. All right, I'll pull this one. Uh, Bollywood Freaks. Cool. This is Bombay Gangster. I played this last night. Yeah, 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 right. It's a version of Dwick. Let's go. Let us sound it all in here. Stuff and yeah, mad. And the other side is um, Don't Stop Till You Get to Bollywood, which is a cover of Michael Jackson's. Don't Stop. stop. And yeah, they're just singing Punjabi or whatever the dialect they are over there. But yeah, I picked this one up in London See. when I was over there and, 20 um, years ago. It was like, what's this? Yeah. Well, I think I heard it one time. It's funny because like a lot of the records I've picked up overseas, I go to all the like Mr. Bongos or the specialty stores and you ask about these records and they're like, what are you talking about? And then you walk in a HMV and it's like a rack <laughs> of sevens. I kid you not, man. And I was like, yeah. I've got some other stories. I wish I brought this other record because it's a really interesting story, but maybe next time. It's a long story, but it's a funny one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really like that. Played yeah. many sets. There was a um, Bollywood 12 um, inch of remixes, right? That um, I don't know if it was A Track or Cut right. Chemist or someone did it. Yeah, I'll have to try and find out what that was, but. It was an album of wow. remixes or Bollywood stuff, yeah. So many records. So yeah, so much, so many records in so little time. Mm. Cool, so we'll play that one, have a listen to that. I chant any, meeny, miny, mo. I rack the mic like a pimp pimp shows. Here's how it goes, I am a genius, I mean this. I shape this, you'll take this. I'm kind of fiendish, you wish that you could come into my neighborhood. Many in my mental state, still I'm five foot eight. Crazy as I wanna be, cause I make it orderly. You could say I'm sort of the boss, so get lost. The brother who will make you change opinions. Dominions, I'm in them when it's time to kick you from the heart. Cause I get a piece of the action. Feeling satisfaction from the street crowd reaction. Yep. Cool. Uh, Track next two. one I got is well, it's the by a guy Kino One and the Hermit, and it's called Really Heavy Heavy, and it pretty much is what it says. It's on the Breaking Bread label, the UK boys. They're yep. like they're all Breaking Bread and what was it, Suspect Packages. Yeah. The pop distro. They used to like take on some other stuff as well. And yeah. Like, Small label, big sounds. Yeah. They had some um, killer records. Yeah, so this is just like drums and horns. I played this one last night. It's like the really like shadow ass type drums. Like a yeah. horn break over the top. Yeah, of the I, I like think that because it's sort of yeah. simple. It's like a train cool. coming through the room, basically. Drums and horns. And it's just, yeah. I, like, I like those sounds. And, and I think it's just always, I'm always like, Toby goes, What are you playing? I go, Oh, just drum funk. Yeah. Because I'd like heavy drums, I like funk. That breaks. Yeah, hip hop, the, the breaks break thing. Beats, and it's yeah. all, I guess it's all stems from me kind of as a beaver and studying as a breakdancer. Yeah. We did it all and we'd still play the older stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
I just never, I think if you break through in your heart, they never leave, you know. You hear a good drum break from the 70s till today, it's still fresh. I reckon my ears will prick up when I hear a drum break in the 70s. <laughs> I'm like, What's yeah. That? yeah. You know, sort of and credit to all the, you know, dope drummers like Purdy and, and um, all the boys that, yeah, Stubberfield that, you know, played thousands of drum breaks over the years and. Mm. And to all the great exposers of those ones too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. Them up. John Jabo Starks. Uh, Starks, yeah. Yeah, some killer killer drummers out there that um, paved the way for everybody and um, probably didn't get the credit that they deserved until yeah. years later. So record number three, what's in the bag? Um, uh, Marsha Hines, you. I heard you play that last night, and um, actually Rob, shout outs to Rob, Mr. Lob. Mr. Lob. Yeah, was like, oh, this is Marsha Hines early stuff. And I yeah. know she had some really funky disco and... Yeah, funky disco and stuff. I think she was like, I don't know, how it was, I don't know if Australia knew how to market her at the time, like American soul sort of thing. Right. Like she was like queen of the pops charts here and there. Yeah. Successful. It was like, I don't Pre know, I, I, I remember this on the radio when I was a kid and stuff and it was like, you know, all that soul records and yeah. thinking of, it's like, oh, that's a pretty cool tune to play out. So yeah. Like, uh, and it held up. Stuff. It sounded great. You it know. sounded massive. Yeah. Which was great. We, I like to work with Marsha Hines because like when she did, when she worked with all those people and tried to make it some like house diva remix sort of thing, it's like, uh, which is what they tend to do with yeah. the soul singers a four, because they four don't know. Yeah. a couple of dance yeah. But what a voice, right? And her daughter oh, even, Demi. Uh, Demi, came out and Killed did it. her own stuff. Yeah, her stuff and rock melons and all that sort of I thing. I don't think they really like are appreciated as much now as they should be as the pioneers of some of the music that came yeah. out in Australia at the time, you know, because um, it was maybe at a time when disco was starting to get a little bit cheesy and particularly yeah, in Australia, end, right? you know, we didn't quite market disco the way that... It, it, and it was always, like, in that period of time, pretty much Australia was, like, getting the last of everything. So yeah. when it was like, yeah, we're disco, and it was, disco, and everyone's right. changed to the next thing. Like, right, yeah, we were oh, too late, it. yeah. Um, and it was probably... a hard market to break into for an Australian because still a lot of punk oh, yeah. rock happening and you know you were up against everybody else weren't you? Aussie yeah. rock. Aussie rock. Yeah, hard to beat. Before we go into the fourth record, can we just talk a bit about the new 45 that you guys have just put out? Yeah, sure. So I think there's a copy of them there. Firstly, thanks for giving me a copy of these um, last night. I admittedly hadn't heard the third one. Well, which, that's the third one there, right? Yeah, that's the third one. Yeah. So it only just got picked up yesterday, right? Yeah. From Zenith. So fresh from, fresh from the press, straight into the Duke joints. Fresh art. The artwork's sick, and actually, 
my ears pricked up because the production sounded so good. I asked you what it was, not actually not even knowing that it was your record. So who did the artwork first of all? Rob Too Dope. He Too works with uh so cool. Toby G at work and he's yeah. like, been smashing out all the couples. Just like Japanese inspired. Yeah, we noticed that at the restaurant last night. It looks similar. Right. So similar cool. to the style of artwork that yeah. he does. Just his picture in the restaurant where we're staying at. Yeah, dope. Yeah. It's like that's so similar. It's, it's that kind of that's sick, that one with the um Octopus and the chains, I thought that was yeah. bad. Yeah, well, the chains uh, from his one, like it's Rakim's chains. Like, each right. One, like, yeah, everything in the last one. See, it's got it goes into the. Rakim's microphone. I don't know if you get any on him, but it's probably it's half a voice float. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So that's Toby G in the background. <laughs> Uh, come and come and introduce yourself, man. If you... <laughs> Speak some English. So this is this is your record, man. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, so produced by Toby G and DJ Ertz, um, Yeah. Yeah. Sick, man. It was like um, the Shoop Be Doop remix with the original um, in the background. Yeah. No, killer. If you guys haven't heard these. Get on them, I'm um, Dr. Dr. Diggins, right? So Dr. Shout Diggins outs. online, yeah. Just well, they just came in, so that one's that one's, that one's fresh. So I mean, there's a few left. There's a lot sold on pre-order, and there's a couple bundle packs with the two. So yeah, um, and then the 90% of you. You know, I've been trying to get 90% of you. 45 for a while, and I couldn't. So when I heard that, I was like, my ears pricked up. Um, that's got the sister Nancy one too. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah sat real down dummy. And put everything in there. Yeah, I kind tried of, to recreate it... the main source. Let's see these are from the first one. Oh, okay, so um, there you go. Look at that. The Humpty nose there. Nervous. Nervous. Always puts a little teaser. You had the little um, nervous nervous records. That's just me taking things. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Borrow, we're borrowing. We just take things. That was the whole thing. It was like, we don't have to take a, get a sample that hasn't been used. We can just jack some ones that haven't been used. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. fun. Edits, edits that we would like to mm. play out. Yeah, yeah totally. Cool. All right, get yeah, out of here. You guys could get a word in the intro. That's right. So, on to track number four, I think we're at. Number four. I played this one last night as well. Uh, Jojo Zap and the Falcons hit and run. Again, when I was growing up as a kid. Yeah. It was just one of those things. Yeah. But it's funky, funky record. I actually yeah. got two copies because you can do a little juggle for the intro sort of thing. You, it's records like this that um, you've, well, someone like for me, I overlook it. You know, I forget that there's some cool Australian funk and breaks and stuff from yeah, or even the that you just overlook because um, I don't know you don't consider them as breaks you know mm, but when like, you hear it yeah it's a break oh it is a break and yeah. it's like funky and it's also yeah. that sort of I look at it songs like that like I said oh I grew up as a kid right and put it on I knew you'd know exactly where I was yeah as that kid was yeah and, it held know, up it sounded really it sounded massive amazing. on the system yeah. I thought like, yeah didn't need to turn it up that, that no. goes to like well you know recording in a studio yeah, live studio instruments and yeah, thing. yeah, um, and you know, Australia had some really good recording studios, all analog recorded and done properly with bands and and live instruments. Uh, yeah, so, and they still do. Yeah, it's like a lot of, lot of, I guess, electronic music is based, you know, because the technology is still laptops. So yeah, right, people don't. I guess have that experience, not a lot of people can have that experience of recording because of money or financial, they don't have a record deal or something Totally, like that or, yeah, and the cost and, and the time. And whatever you're making too. Right. It's like, you know, we make dance records as well, probably went to the studio to do it as well yeah. as doing it on a laptop on an airplane, to, you know, um, two miles above the planet. Talking about, like, with the resin dogs, a lot of that stuff, was that done on machines? Was it sampled and looped or had it, what was the process? It's done on everything, man. Yeah. Like, it was basically all sample bass. Yeah. And then the band came into playing, you know, just Later practicing on. and playing yeah. live. Yeah. Sort of thing. It was sort of, we sort of fell into it. But yeah, it's always been like digging and chopping yeah. and sampling and stuff like that. And yeah. We were more on that. I mean, someone 
said like we're you know we're like a funk band but like Washington Go Go as well yeah. and stuff which you know earlier days called what are called responses yeah. they did yeah um, yeah, yeah which made the live show it's true green beats and stuff right. like to compare it to nowadays where we sort of play to like beds where we've still got samples and stuff in there but mm. it's all set to a bed where a band can play to it yeah and it's a bit more, more finalised and and a bit more like comes as a show, whereas yep. early Resin Dogs we could trigger, and it was just it was loose. Yeah, like we could we could jam, we could extend stuff, yep. and stuff. And we were holding like you know four or five samples on keyboards with our fingers playing. <laughs> yeah. like, it looked like we're playing keys, but we're just re-triggering the loop. So it's, yeah. you know, it looked like we're playing. What like, program chops. were you using at that time? Oh no, we took like um. I took my 3200 Akai S 3200 on the road with me. Yeah. And he used to have, before Scuzzy just used to have to write up like three or four. <laughs> but while Jeff's playing, he had his sampler, which had like, you know, X amount of songs on there as well. So yeah. while he's playing his yeah. song that he wrote on that side, I'm your here loading your... <laughs> and it's like, you know, you get two, three and a half minutes to load yeah. a song, hopefully to do it. And if that wasn't happening, the band would like start off making the bass playing the drum and jam and they do a little interlude up. and then, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, last this is loading, know, you know. It's like, people don't know the struggles. Do, do, do the struggle where with, you just um, drop your set into your thing. Where now you've got Ableton Live and it's like all your yeah, banks are ready. Everything's <laughs> there now. And it's like before that was like, tick, tick, that's, half the, that's half the, oh, the fun of the live show. It would mm. never be the same. And doing it on a major fun. stage yeah. was just hilarious, man. Yeah, the pressure of having, having oh, to be able just, to do it. Are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? We always knew we were going to make it because we knew the song mix, but it was just like, what happens if How? power trips or what happens? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you yeah, know, just, you never got backups. Yeah. yeah, just loading floppies. The scuzzy thing, was, like I said, was like, oh, it was so good because you could load up the whole scuzzy and go click, next yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. Click, next song. Yeah. So, um, from a couple of Australian artists um, to this regurgitator polyester girl. Cool, and it's the picture disc yeah. too, which you um, you don't get to see a lot of anymore. No, I don't get to do it. We um, we've got good close relationships with the boys. As yeah, well, so yeah, we've got given a whole lot of records and stuff. Um, but Regurgitator, one of my favourite bands. Never knew who they were. Now, were you doing the cuts for them? I did the cuts for Kung Fu Sense. So, the, yeah, so that was... Yeah, that was a bit of a secret. That, that was a bit of a secret, yeah. Did you mention that? Was that something you came out with last year or a year oh, ago? Oh, no? yeah, put it on there for the 20th and stuff. Right. Like when the album got done, I don't think it was in a country or something. Or yeah. Just, I was still at college or something like that. And, no, yeah, I just wow. went in and did it. No, yeah. no, you know, so like the album credits got done and stuff, and there was no mention on it. No, no, whatever. Didn't even get paid exposure. <laughs> didn't even get exposure, but you had to expose it. yourself. Yeah, had yeah. to expose myself. <laughs> but you know, it's but it's cool. Record. It's a bit of bit of Australian bit of Australian history there. Like, and, oh man, yeah. and I love those guys. It was cool to, awesome. It was amazing to find that stuff out, and uh, and I reckon. It blew, blew my mind when I heard you did the cuts for it and a lot of people would have been really surprised, you know, because you didn't, nobody knew. Nobody knew. Yeah. I mean, what do you say, you run around and go, oh, I did the cuts. Yeah, for right. Oh, I could. But, yeah. You know, it, yeah, but it's It was an in-house joke with friends. It was like the quiet, best kept secret catch yeah. ever had. Yeah, it was such a tune too. Mm, such that a was killer good. tune. And it, we got to tour with them. And, yeah, you know, sweet. We've all we've all like worked in different bands. Yep. With Dave was in Pangay with Ben Eli, and that's sort of how I met and heard about him and stuff. And I used to do the hip hop show. The only thing I can remember was like um, seeing this. Yeah, we have Time Out magazines, like you know, the street press. Yes. And um, I remember seeing an article, and there was they did something on me for I was doing a hip hop party or something. But on the other side. of Thing was regurgitated and they all dressed up like Beast of Boys and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but then like, you know, a couple of years later I get called up, do you want to do some cuts? Cause yeah, you were like, yeah, I love these guys. <laughs> working on the, Magoo who worked on the album, he'd seen yeah. me do something with a band at the time. Yeah. Got the call up. Yeah, see. 
yeah. a big hit for them too, wasn't it? Like, I mean, Massive. that was probably the big the small. peak of their um, their time in Australian music, and man, they were killing it for years, doing Massive. really well. They yeah. did well so, overseas, and when you see people go from like gigs playing to fifty people or so, and then they just Massive. yeah, they blow apparently up. like the the um, well, I did like the. Um, Chili Peppers show with him. It was the first time I played, and it was like massive arena. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, and it was just like yeah. crazy shit. Yeah, you've got to be prepared for that. Yeah, it was like yeah. I, I, the first time I played in front of that many people. I yeah, was like, yeah. I'm gonna crap myself. Yeah. And the second time is <laughs> the livid at um, West End at Davies Park before they moved it to another place, and I think it was Silver Chair, we're good. Yeah, wow. We're good agitator and garbage and that. Wow. And yeah, Maybe it was like is, massive. But- Right. And apparently Silverchair's manager called up and said they're, they're now headlining because they're the biggest band in the country, bigger than Garbage, and they just blew up. Yeah, they, yeah. Massive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, those moments are good. Like, all, yeah. Like I said, all those music takes you on a journey back to where you like, can, Yeah. Today, thanks so much for coming down, man. That Thank was you. that was really cool, and fun. thanks again for for sharing your knowledge and your, your your records with us, and also for joining us at um, Section Eight last night. Yeah, no, it's dope, man. Great venue. Yeah, we'll definitely have now. to have you guys back, man. You absolutely rocked it, and anyone that was there last night can you know attest to that. It was just a killer, good. killer set, and, and um, good sound. Yeah, finally got some proper sound in there you guys kind of blessed the system so that's my top five for this week and mine yeah thank you (laughs) thanks man peace we explored the large world around us and we found a million noisy moving colorful 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 objects